Hello and welcome to another day of the devotion as we talk this week about putting our prayers into practice, part two. How does a ministry of the church really practically fit into everyday life discipleship? And to this week we talk about membership and outreach. I'm reminded of another story from the book of Acts, the Ethiopian eunuch. If you read in Acts chapter 8, this eunuch has come from Jerusalem. He's been worshiping outside the temple. It says in the temple, but he's not allowed to go in. He's a eunuch. Crush nuts and whatnot. That's a no-no according to the law. So <coughs> this guy is reading scripture, a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. And Philip comes along on the road with him and says, Hey, I hear you're reading. Do you know what you're reading? Do you understand? He says, How can I know if there's not anybody to teach me? And I've heard many times as I've had a visitor or someone connect with me in a wedding or a service outside of the church, oh, what church is it you serve? And I tell them about First Congregational United Church of Christ, and they said, oh, I had no idea that that church was there in Donners Grove. I've been to the library. I've been to Fishel Park. Well, outreach and membership is that. How do I know unless there's somebody to tell me? Well, outreach and membership is the ministry that is the somebody to tell. It is the group that is the, the voice piece of the church to be out in the community <clears throat> and to be saying this is who First Congregational United Church of Christ is everywhere so that people know who we are not just by our actions but also by our words <clears throat> and the descriptions of who we are as a community of faith. Otherwise we're just the best kept secret in the corner of town that nobody's ever heard about except our members. And that's not really what a church is, right? It's not supposed to be just, you know, a club that you belong to. Like, you know, you go to the, the country club for lunch and some, some hors d'oeuvres with the uh, underhills. No, no, no. A church is supposed to be um, not, not a mutually exclusive thing, but an, a wide open door. And as, um, oh gosh, his name escapes me, but he said, if people are in fire for who Christ is in their lives, um, it, it should be like, you know, churches shouldn't have to do a whole lot of self-promoting. It should be like, you know, you see a fire in the fire department and everybody's drawn to it. If you see the fire of the people and what their faith means to them as they share it in the community, um, people will be drawn to that. So it's, you know, how, how well are we sharing the joy of our story with God? And if we had, you know, 12 people doing that, 15 people doing that, and each of them reached 20 people. Well, you say, well, where do you get that model? Well, Jesus. Jesus and the boys, right? How many did he pick? He picked 12. How many, how many people are Christian today? Well, he picked the best of the best, the best, right? No, this isn't like Top Gun and Maverick. The best of the best, the best, sir. No, these guys were tax collectors and fishermen and some of them illiterate. What? Doesn't sound like a good team to put together. Except they were. Because it was all about heart and about transformation of their lives in ways that they felt so powerfully, so convicted about what they were sharing. That this treasure they held was everything. And that gift, that outreach into the world, this is who we are. Uh, this is a church like many you probably never encountered. Come see what this place is about. And that's membership.